Maybe we can talk to Alpha Node first. Still no sign of thank, right? Eh? I will get to the bottom of that. Oh, forgive me. It was. It has been a long day. Did you have something to say? Rianje, oh, I. I've always struggled to understand what's going on in his head, now more than ever. Listen, Nero, if anything should happen, it should be me who. Just know that I am prepared to do what must be done. Right then, to more pressing matters, since we have no idea when Thancred might arrive, I suggest we see what information we can gather in his. Okay, the ourselves guy. Alphano. When we were free, Alphano is eager to get to work. So, to review, we are reliably informed that Al members of the Alamegan Resistance operated here have or operating here have taken receipt of large shipments of crystals. Our task being to ascertain who and why. Given the size of the settlement, I find it hard to believe that anyone here could be wholly unaware of the resistance movements. The challenge, of course, will be finding individuals who are both able and willing to share such information with outsiders. It would seem sensible to divide our forces. Miro, why don't you question the residents in the eastern half of town? Alice and I will do the same in the western, and we can rendezvous here to find our... to discuss our findings. Sorry. That's right, they want me to go east. I don't right recall if these guys are upstairs or downstairs, so... We'll go upstairs first. Okay, upstairs. Alright, so you can voice Ottolin. It's very small. And my music is on. There we go. Eh, the resistance. Damn if I know. It's not as if I'd be any use to him. If you set store by all those tales of secret weapons, good luck to you. But I'm too old for the mass bedtime stories. This is our lot, and it's time we got used to it. Yeah. Wait, what? Cavius. I don't think there's anybody else up here. All right, jump down. There's Tailbot. And Sifrida, okay. Talk to Tailbot first. I see you there, going around asking questions. Looking for the Griffin and his lot, I'll bet. Seems they're the talk of little Alamigo these days. Folk wondering what he's about. What he's got in store for the Garleans, and what's under that mask of his, of course. Some say he's hardly got a face. What with all the scars. Others reckon he's been marked for death by the Empire, and that they'd send a bloody legion if they knew he was here. Your guess is as good as mine. And... Sifrid. Ah, let me guess. Come to join the fight, have you? No need to deny it, friend. You're not the first to answer the Griffin's call. While he's lit a fire in every Alamegan's heart, he's so ins also inspired more than a few Uldans to pledge themselves to the cause. And little wonder, the Garleans won't stop until we're all under the yoke. Alright. So then we've heard quite a bit about this Griffin fellow. My guess is the griffin's silly. What's Alice I have to say about all this? Well, that was easier than I expected. There's not a soul here who's in the ego to talk about our friends. Hey, Blurry, thanks for the cheer. How you doing? Alpha oh, Nona. I suppose I should ask what you learned, but I think I already know. The Re Griffin seems to be the leader of a newly formed faction within the Resistance, the Masks. Yet despite their growing popularity, no one seems to know much about them, only that they are the most aggressive militant group to join the movement in recent memory. Indeed, many claim their commitment to the cause of Alamegan liberation is unrivaled, but we can hope their revolution fervor, revolutionary fervor is never challenged, challenged, channeled in the direction of a primal. Though I feel confident that this group, which received the crystal shipments, we yet lack proof. 
Before taking any action, I would speak with the settlement's leader to confirm my suspicions, and may have enlist his help while I'm about it. Given that you and Gundobald are already acquainted, mayhap it would be best if you took the lead. Shall we? Silly, you can voice Gundobald. I'm pretty sure you did before. What's going on, Blurry? How's your weekend treating you? Gundobald. Hello. Much as it pleases me to see you again, Miro, I cannot help but wonder if I should be worried. Here you and yours have been asking questions. The Griffin. Aye, I know of him, as do we all. He and his mast have become a leading faction within the Resistance. Though there was suspicion at first, given his secretive ways, he quickly proved himself a charismatic and capable commander. Men are drawn to his passion and his vision. They truly believe that he has what it takes to lead them to victory. Even I cannot help but admire the man for what he's accomplished. But I have not forgotten Wilred. I was blind to the danger of his ambitions, and you were not. The Griffin will soon deliver a speech to our people at the sunken temple of Karn. Go and see him with your own eyes. Weigh his words with your own heart. How convenient. Tis but a pity Thancred is not here to join us. You two go on a hell. Oh. Sorry. Oh, voices. <laughs> you hadn't spoken so. You two go on ahead. I shall stay behind and wait for... Sorry, I was muted. Okay. Back over to the Sunken Temple we go. It's been a while since we've been over there. It's time the to whisper best go. place. Sunken Temple of Karn. I fucking hate that dungeon now. There's something about Square Enix's uh, algorithm that gives you... Uh, that puts you in dungeons that keeps putting me in Sunken Temple. Out of all the multitude of dungeons it can choose for me, it picks Sunken Temple. Fortunately, that hasn't been true this past week, for the, but for the two weeks before that. Yeah. There's Alphano. <laughs> hey, Blurry. Thanks for the cheers. Has it begun already? I hear voice coming, voices coming from within. I think this might have been voiced. Brothers and sisters, 20 years ago, Alamigo, our home, was claimed by the Galian Empire. It is voiced. In our haste to overthrow the King of Ruin, we turned a blind eye to our foes in the north. With our glorious revolution, we but laid a path for a new tyrant to succeed the old. And when confronted with our failure, we fled. Not a day goes by that I do not think of those we left behind. Think of them and feel ashamed. And I know each and every one of you feels the same. We abandoned them, our own flesh and blood, to labor till their backs gave in and their breath gave out, building the twisted steel ramparts which now mar our once majestic mountains. We abandoned them, the brave and true, to fight and die for their country, or worse, to be conscripted and sent off to rob another poor bastard of his home. We abandoned them, the meek and powerless, to bow and scrape when the Galleons pass, to sully themselves that they might live to see another day of misery. The Black Wolf may be dead, 
But a new Imperial Viceroy reigns in Alamigo now. A beast, not a fraction as merciful. You all know the Eorzean Alliance will do not to oppose him. For all their promises and platitudes, they will not act if there's no profit in it. Only we can free our brothers and sisters from the Empire's tyranny, my friends. Only we have the courage to stand and fight. They have imprisoned us. They have enslaved us. And they have murdered us. But no more. Blood demands blood. And the Garleans shall pay for every drop they have spilt upon our lands. This I promise you. For we have a power within us, my friends. A power befitting our pride, our righteousness. Only join us, and we shall grant you the means to unleash it. And together, we shall see the Alamegan standard raised over the mountains of Gia Arbania once more. A power befitting their pride. Not at all ominous, that. Wait, is that... What are you two doing here? I could ask you the same thing. Well, well, this is quite the surprise. If you see what I see, if you feel as I feel... Might I suggest we continue this conversation in more agreeable surroundings? For it is not strength of arms that will win this battle, but strength of heart. Alright, so we are back with friends here, we're going to share screens, there we go, I'm going to talk to Ida first and then Papalimo. Hey Yukio, long time no see. Of all the places to meet, it has to be fate. May happy to my imagination, but you seem rather more rugged and world weary than when we last spoke. And Alphano. This might be voiced again, I don't know. Nope. Words cannot express how glad I am to see you both alive and well. And you. So it was pretty obvious. You and Miro would be fine. The Crystal Braves never had a realistic chance of capturing any of the Scions, divided as they were and distrusted by the better part of Eorzea. But if you truly believe that, forgive me, what exactly have you two been doing all this time? Repaying a favor. After the banquet, we had no choice but to flee Ulda, and we would not have been able to do so without the aid of old friends from the Resistance. That's right. They smuggled us out of the city and sheltered us in you know, all at a great risk to themselves. Obviously, we couldn't let that go unacknowledged, so we offered to help them out their operations for a while. When we learned of the Scion's exoneration, that Lolorito had severed all ties with the Crystal Braves, and that General Robon had been reinstated, we resolved to make contact, but having long since discarded our life pearls as a precautionary measure, our options were rather limited. To make matters more complicated, we were embroiled in a delicate operation at the time, leaving me with little choice but to entrust a letter to a courier. I gather from your puzzled expressions, however, that you never received it. To be honest, we thought this might happen. While the masks are happy to let the refugees spread the word within the community, we're pretty strict about communicating with other outsiders. Oh. And we also heard a rumor that the Griffin doesn't want meddling in Ferris. 
The Griffin mistrusts the Scions of the Seventh Dawn? Curious, it is well known that we are no friends to Gollumald. One would think that we would... The man we saw beseeching all and sundry to join his cause would welcome our support. Ah. I should say that the man you saw was not in fact the Griffin, but an impersonator. And a talent rabble-rouser to boot. It would not surprise me if he were responsible for the majority of these public appearances. As you may have gathered, the Griffin is an extremely cautious and distrusting man who has made every effort to conceal his identity. Even when we participated in a raid under his direct command, we were not permitted to approach him. It's hard to know what to make of it all. Secrecy, the impersonators, the masks... But it's not if, as if I'm making all of you wear one. And mine only covers half my face. It's completely different. Anyway, when we heard the Griffin was due to give a speech, we thought it might be a good opportunity to get a better sense of the man behind the, uh, to get a better sense of the man. For all the good it did. And now you have heard the whole of it, but tell me, what prompted you to take interest in the Griffin? Summoning? You're not serious. I can't believe it. The Resistance would never even entertain such a ridiculous plan, but the Griffin, while the man is an enigma, I cannot say with any confidence that he would what he would or would not do. What I can say, however, is that the speech we heard today was not the first to make reference to a power capable of defeating the Empire. The masks have made such claims of late. I confess, I had assumed it to be mere bluster, but in the context of the shipments of which you spoke, it is not impossible that they are alluding to a primal. Whatever it is, we'll find out together. And if anyone tries to stop us, they'll answer to me. Indeed, that is... assuming you'll have us. You thought the female character in game uh, has it? They do. Uh, every character in the game has their own voice actor. It's just uh, for the scenes that don't, we do the voice acting. And yep, Piamet or Wintrigue does the voice acting of the ladies for me. I don't do the greatest uh, lady voices. If you haven't watched my other streams, <laughs> yeah, you usually make silly do that. Oh, only if they're uh, uh, <laughs> Mithra or Makote. Honorable uh heroes. Papalimo, or the children. children. Papalimo has a mind to learn the Griffin's true intentions. If, as you suspect, the Griffin is indeed plotting to summon a primal, we must needs obtain confirmation while there is yet time to act. To that end, I propose we question his double. Given his role as the group's de facto mouthpiece, it should be, I should not be surprised if he were one of the Griffin's closest associates. And while he may not be aware of the most sensitive details, he could probably tell us the mask plans in broad strokes. Like the man whom he impersonates, however, he is wary of outsiders. He will not expose himself without a suitable incentive. My plan is as follows. You and Alphano will pose as adventurers fallen on hard times, inspired by his words to take up arms for a noble cause. Ida and I, as members of the Resistance, will recount tales of your past achievements and testify as to your usefulness in the struggles ahead. With your enthusiastic insurances still ringing in his ears, he will doubtless he will decide to welcome you in person, and we will arrange a meeting. You will need to come to the part, uh, look the part, that we might maintain the charade. Until we have him cornered, at least. Here, this should be enough to purchase suitable, suitable garments from Tailbot, and to have him rub a respectable amount of dirt on them for a good measure. Any questions? It all seems simple enough. Thank you, and with that, Miro, let us be off. Alright, we're gonna go buy some dirty clothes. Heck, that's going to be the new uh, the new uh, style in the next few years. Now you can buy pre-ripped pants. And for some reason, they cost extra. But new, soon we're going to get pants that come pre-dirty. They already have those. Oh, well. See, I'm not up on well, fashion. Well, they're not actually dirty. They look dirty. It's close enough, right? Yeah. Stupid enough. 
Well, don't you look at me. You are the one with the sack of gill. You do have the sack of gill, don't you? Eh, you want to buy what? I don't know what you're up to, but I want no part of it. Sack of gill, a heavy leather pouch entrusted you to you by Papalimo. Not all problems can be solved with a fistful of gill. For the rest, one must needs resort to a sack. Well, you're the ones with the gill, and seen as you're friends of Papalimo. There, tunic and slops for both of you, tailored and uh, treated to your tastes. Now off with you before someone sees us together. And clothes make it the men, as they say. Right, then I will go change and see you at the spot Papalimo marked on our maps. Oh, fuck off. You're not going to change, change in front of us? And where is it? Oh, the Weathered Shepherd's tunic, okay. And the Weathered Shepherd slops. There we go. Don't we just look fantastic? Never mind the fact that we got these expensive looking gloves and shoes on. And Paro Rogo. Look at that job, just hopping along. I don't know why, but running around Alamigo reminds me of when I first started playing this game. He's off and on. He's wearing slops, too. Alright. Well, look at us! A pair of down-at-heel adventurers seeking a chance to recapture past glories. Yes, this should suffice. And now we will play the waiting game. My thanks, comrades. It's voiced. You must be the esteemed adventurers of whom I've heard so much. I understand you have taken an interest in our cause. A great interest, you might say. Your words have certainly made quite an impression on my friend and I. The Resistance has long, and some would say wisely, avoided open engagements with the Garleans. But you and yours seem confident against the world in arms. I can only assume you have good reason to be so bold. Why, one might even think you are planning to summon a primal. Because that would do much to explain the sizable shipment of crystals you recently received from your smuggler friends, whom our Ishgardian allies have since detained, lest you wonder. I'd like to hear more about the Griffin. The real Griffin. Your performance earlier didn't fool us. Ah, the famous scions of the Seventh Dawn. I should have known better than to think I could conceal the truth from you lot. You are right. I am not the Griffin, but I speak with his voice, and it was at his BS that we procured those crystals. You are wrong, however, if you think that we procured them to summon a primal. We use them to reach an accord with the Amalja. In exchange for crystals to summon their god, they will aid us in the fight for Alamegan liberation. You've got to be joking. Have you gone completely mad? When people find out you helped the Lizardmen summon Ifrit, they'll turn on the resistance. Alamigo will never be free. This isn't a fairy tale, girl. We don't have the luxury to play at being honorable heroes. It's because the likes of you wouldn't sully your saintly hands that Alamigo's been under the yoke for the past 20 years. But the Griffin won't stand for it, and neither will we. We're ready to do whatever it takes. What proof do you have of this arrangement with the Amalja? What? A 
Aside from a lack of crystals, none. But the beastmen have a great big pile of the things if you fancy looking. You might want to hurry, though. It'll not be long before they summon their god. Search our camp if you don't believe me. We have not to hide. If there is a cache to be found, Eder and I will find it. Then let us be off. Are you perchance the warrior of light? Aye, I thought so. You should know that a great many who have joined us did so because you saved them. Because you showed them that one brave woman can make a difference. You saved me too once. Helped a friend over in Quarry Mill make some medicine I needed. But that was a lifetime ago. On behalf of my brothers and sisters, I thank you. You gave us hope where there was none. Courage and strength when all was lost. We shall not squander your gift. I know that look, Ida, and I do not like it. You cannot seriously be contemplating taking up arms with that band of cutthroats. I... I just... If the Griffin and his men have their way, it is only a matter of time before the situation in Alamigo comes to a head. Your homeland's future teeters on a knife edge, and any reckless action, however small, could have irrevocable consequences. You mustn't lose sight of that, Ida. When the time comes, we must all make our choices, but we must do so in full possession of the facts. Now, let us away. There is work to be done. Yay, I think I can get out of these slops now. I quit my actual outfit. Oh, that's nice. Uh... I gotta actually repair my gear soon. Quarry Millie said, Do you remember? I do. Forgive me, you cannot be expected to recall every name and face, and besides, it's not as if it matters. I have long admired how you live in the present, how you focus on the problems at hand, and always keep moving forward. So let us keep moving forward together, Miro. We must find and secure those crystals. This is no time for looking back. So, if you recall, when I first started the stream, uh, there was a point when we went to uh, a quarry mill for the first time, and there was some Alamegans there who uh, needed some medicine and nobody would help them. And uh, we actually helped. One life for one world. Alpha Node would keep moving forward. If we take the Griffin's word at his, uh, double at his word, then the crystals are now somewhere within Zaharak, ready to be put out to use by the Yamalja. We must surprise Alice of all we had learned. I will join you both in Little Alamigo after I have changed. Yes, change out in the de desert here. Maybe you'll get stung by a scorpion and killed. Nah, I don't want Alpha Node to die. He's useful for pushing the, uh... He's useful for pushing the story forward, if at our, uh, if at our behest. And, I'm gonna share screens with Pacamet. Where the fuck is it? There it is. There we go, we're gonna talk to Alice, eh? Now that Thancred has finally arrived, mayhap you could share your latest find. You mean to tell me that while we were worrying ourselves sick, Ida and Papalima were here all along? Well, Ishtola be re will be relieved and also angry. Mainly angry, I should think. As for the crystals, what choice do we have? We cannot very well leave them in the hands of the Amalja. 
For all we know, they could be preparing to summon Ifrit even as we speak. And we must make for Zaharak without delay. Agreed. If there's none else to discuss, let us depart at once. So you can voice the masked man. And so they go forth in accordance with the Griffin's plan. The players gather to assume their marks on a stage wreathed in flame. Ere long, the curtain shall rise, and the drama of which I am author, gods forgive me, shall at last be performed. Naught health remaineth, save to stand at the ready and pray that the chance is seized, for never shall we know its like again. Okay. So we got a serving of spaghetti pescator. Now I gotta talk to Alphanode, because they teleported us over here. I confess, I expected a warmer greeting, but we must not jump to conclusions. Not until we have braved the bowl of embers. We must be ready to engage the enemy at any moment. If you would make any final preparations, pray do so now. I shall await your signal. Upon proceeding to the bowl of embers, several cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. Yeah. Oh, shit. Still on the party. There we go. So, Blurry, Yukio, how's, how are you guys doing this weekend? What's going on? I think this is this probably isn't right. Yeah. The Emulsia would never leave this place so poorly guarded. Not willingly, no. The saviors of Eorzea. Slow as ever. By the twelve, will you never learn? You know you're right. Mayhap it is time for a change of tack. Killing primals, tormenting beastmen, hastening the birth of a new god. It's all a bit much, isn't it? And frankly, we don't have the leisure to do it. But killing the warrior of light, on the other hand, that would soon plunge Eorzea into chaos. One life for one world. A fair exchange. Wouldn't you agree? Lest you forget, you've more than one opponent. Carbuncle! Defend me! I sense you will offer more than mere target practice. Unlike your sister. Alize! Did... Did I not tell you, Alphano? I am not the girl I once was. My brother was always the clever one while my talents lay elsewhere.
As Eorzea's blade of light once stood by my side, now I shall stand at hers and defend this realm with all my might. Let's finish this. Yay, we finally get to fight the Warriors of Darkness. I don't quite remember how this fight's supposed to go, though. I remember I failed it. And I was healing. It took forever. We've come too far. Sacrifice too much to stop now. You think you're the only ones who have known sorrow? Probably would have been good for me to bring us down, I guess. You shall fall soon enough. There's no escape! Oh shit. I might get hit by that. Oh no. The Swiss is 350 uh, pounds in Germany. Uh, well. I want to get back already. That was fast. Is this the power of the echo? I guess it would be, yes. City and Carbuncles is beating up this Ranger of Darkness over here. City and uh, uh, Carbuncles showed the ch uh, the chick there who's boss too. She shot an arrow and Obsidian Carbuncles like nah and ca caught it out of midair. At least this healer actually casts heal spells on their side. Can't they rise? Have these warriors no limits? No more games. Like Saturn or Media Market is a little cheaper. Um, oh shit, I'm uh, chained. That's rude. God damn it! I can't break free. It ends now. What? The chains! God, you snake! You would betray us as well? He that holdeth fast under his convictions shall never count betrayal amongst his crimes, though all the world may call him villain. My path is unchanged, my creed sacrosanct. This I believe with all my heart. But say, warrior of darkness, and speak true, what dost thou believe? That rendering up the souls of thy world in service to the rejoining will grant it salvation? Nay. By the Twelve, Oriange! Mine apologies, Master Alfino. That the brightest light might shine, duty did compel me to walk in darkest shade. You sweet fool, I was almost willing to believe you had turned against us. 
I expect a full explanation when this is over. For now, may I assume you have turned your cloak for the last time? Thou mayest, my lady. By thy leave. Even odds, then. No matter. We'll crush the lot of you in one fell swoop! Understood. Hearken to me. We only have one chance. Channel your ether into my blade that I might strike before the mage casts his spell. I cannot do it alone, but together... Together, we can defeat them! All right. Make ready! They come! Ugh. Let's take out the healer first. It's not enough. Uh, nine PM. This guy's got a pretty good strategy set up, though. Although, I'd like to know why his cover lasts so long compared to mine. Yeah, he's only at 41%, buddy. I'm at an 80 at 100. I don't think you stand a chance right now. Why does this guy got, like, uber steel cyclone? I want that. Like, why can't warriors do all this and, like, when we play them? Because, um, well, I don't know if Tongue would be a spoiler or not. It would be. But, warriors can't do skydive, or utter destruction, or rolling destruction. 
Carbuncle is now attacking the Warrior of Darkness. Gotcha. Courage, friends. Oh, fuck off. Alize, are you hurt? A touch dizzy, but otherwise fine. Thank you. And there you have it. Our friend is too stubborn to die. We are far from finished. Or have you never considered how we came to this world? Crystals? You mean... like the Asians? Just so. As the Asians flee unto the rift twixt plains with crystals of darkness, so did these warriors come hither with crystals of light. Eloquent, as always. Aye, like the Asians, we too are beyond death. You cannot defeat that which is eternal. <laughs> Wait! Such methods as the Asians employ require the renunciation of the flesh. You... You would have had to... At long last, you see. To save our world, we gave our lives. We were just adventurers trying to make our way. And our job here, a favor there, we never aspired to be warriors of light. But word of our deeds spread, and soon people were calling us heroes. They placed their hopes and dreams on our shoulders, and bid us fight for all that was good and right. We fought, and we fought, and we fought, until there was no one left to fight. We won! And now our world is being erased from existence. We did everything right. Everything that was asked of us and still, still it came to this. You of all people should understand. We cannot. We will not falter. We brought our world to the brink of destruction, and now we must save it. <clears throat> I've died before, Arbut. I'm not afraid to die again. Hmm. 
No matter how many times we fall, we must rise and carry on the fight for those we left behind. To have known the depth of sorrow and embraced the highest sacrifice. Nonetheless, Master Louis Soi guide my hand, I pray you, as fate's thread spinneth upon this most capricious spindle. Quickly! Thou must needs invoke the power of thy crystal! What is this place? Such pain. Such sorrow. Oh, my dear children. It can't be. Mother Heidelin, hearken unto your children's plea. From two worlds do we gather, and from two worlds do we offer a bounty of light. In this desperate hour we do beseech your intercession. We beg an audience with the word of the mother, with your chosen Minfilia. Your cries go not unheard nor your sacrifices unnoticed. Though many are lost, there are those we can yet save, who I can yet save. Minfilia. Blessed children of the first, the light of your world hath grown blinding in its radiance, but it is not yet absolute. I will hie me to your world and there take unto myself the light which riseth even now to drown it, as darkness once did drown another. Now you deign to answer our prayers? I will suffer this farce no longer! As the Asians must serve as instruments of Zodiac's will, so too must others carry out the will of Hydaelyn. But for the boon you have granted her, she has grown strong enough to set me free, that I might serve as her emissary. Your suffering, your sacrifice, your supplications, she has heard all. We will not let the first fall to light.
Thank you, Uri Anger, for bringing everyone here. It fills my heart with joy to look upon the faces of my friends once more. In taking you unto her bosom, I knew that Heidelin had bequeathed to you a sliver of her grace, granting you strength long sought. And in treating with the Asians, I learnt of a star like unto our own, a doomed world of fallen heroes in whom I glimpsed ourselves, the first. Full long did I search for a means to save this world, concluding at the last that the answer lay in the power of blessed crystals. And thus did I labor to set light against dark. Yet I knew from the beginning that this salvation would not come without sacrifice. For the instrument of the first's deliverance would of necessity be required to journey thither, there to remain, mayhap forever. You orchestrated all of this, not to save her, but to send her away. One life for one world. Such was the bargain, and you the coin, though it were not mine to spend. Have we not walked together in the light of the crystal, and at her bidding borne witness to the joys and sorrows of this land? Each and every one of you knows my heart. If this be the price I must pay, I pay it gladly. You would go alone, then? My dearest Thancred, you who have ever watched over me, I am truly grateful for all you have done on my behalf, as would my father be. Your kindness, your compassion, your love. These are your gifts to me, and our gifts to them, forming a bond which transcends time and space. Sometimes I forget you are not the child I once knew. Make me proud. Long have I watched you from Heidelin's side, watched as you nurtured and kept safe the light of the dawn. The dark recesses of the world hide untold secrets and dangers. Thus do I entrust to you, Tubsumati. I pray you, keep to the path that you may never have need of it. seem the power of our crystals is all but spent. Perhaps, if there is naught else to be done. Hear me, servants of Hydaelyn. If you would have us place our trust in you, then I would ask a favor. Take us with you. Take us home. We were blind to the truth once, so I tell you this as one fool to another. Light, dark, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you choose to use them. We made our choice and you see what came of it, so please, forge a different path. 
sees a better fate. Strange feeling. So many times have I watched you depart, my heart filled with worry. And ever did you return to me in triumph. Someday, when I have found a way to free this star from her sorrow, I promise you I shall repay the favor. It's probably not voiced from here on, so I'm going to share screens with Pac-Man. Alright, we're going to talk to Alphano. It would seem we are in Southern Thanalan again. Minfili is doing, no doubt. May the Twelfth speed her on her way, and the Warriors of Darkness too. I cannot help but wonder what awaits those wayward souls. If they gave their lives in order to travel to the Source, then in returning to the First, would they not... But mayhap that was their wish. An ending to mark a new beginning. Alpha Node seems a bit at lo a loss for words. Mm -hmm. Forgive me, my thoughts were elsewhere. And this is when I know full well there is yet work to be done. The crystals. Leave them to me. I will go back to Zaharak and secure them. The Amalju will still be in disarray at the thrashing of warriors of darkness gave them. They're not like to notice a lone bard skulking about. But Thangrid, you don't have to do this, I know, but I want to. I will see you at the Rising Stones. Hey, Lonk! I should go and find Yida and Papa Rimo. They should, uh, must have finished searching the mass camp by now, not that it matters anymore. Alright, before we continue, I'm going to reset this recording.